Good day, Ian here from FPV Power. Just going to take the opportunity to um, explain about supercapacitors. Uh, as some of you must have uh, seen by now, that we are supplying uh, Maxwell supercapacitors. So the um, brand here is Maxwell Technologies, um, American American company, and they've been um, taken over, or the company has been bought out by Tesla, Elon Musk. So he has. Uh, bought out Maxwell um, for the uh, technology uh, in the supercapacitor field. So let's talk about what a supercapacity is and what a supercapacitor is not. <clears throat> so a supercapacitor um, is not a direct battery replacement uh, and a supercapacitor uh, works well in conjunction with batteries for 90% of the application. So what a capacitor is, a, a supercapacitor it has the ability to dump um, high amount of currents in a split of a second. So what these capacitors, this one here is a 48 volt um, supercapacitor, and this at the back here, or even this one here, you can see it more clearly, these are 16 volt uh, supercapacitors. So there's three of these 16s uh, inside one of these uh, 48. So these are used Maxwell supercapacitors. Uh, we've had the chance to be able to get our hands on these. Uh, these are taken off um, electric trains, so the trains used for starting up and also for regenerative braking, which I'll explain later. So supercapacitor can take high amounts of uh, charge current and they can also give high amount of um, discharge current in a very short time. Uh, now, a supercapacitor, these ones, these are rated regardless of 48 or 16 volt, they are rated to be able to dump 1,900 amps. So 1,900 amps, boom, they can give. So in other words, is if, if you grab the both terminals, negative, positive, fully charged, you can get 1,900 amps out of it. And they will do this a million times without stressing. The life cycle on a supercapacitor is a million cycles. Um, so these are used, but we test all the capacitors coming in uh, for the internal resistance. So meaning that the life in these, they are still 95% working capability versus brand new. So these are still, call it brand new um, performance, as to say. So how do we know these? We've, we've sold this in Australia. Um, we've sold hundreds of these and uh, in different fields. So as we said, they can dump high amounts of current in a very short time. But yet, if you were to Let's say 16. Now, why do we have 16 versus 48? 48, they are useful for solar off-grid. We sell a lot, a lot of these for solar off-grid as well. So with solar off-grid, people are running 48-volt um, battery banks, 24 volts, 12 volts. Some are running 36 volts. So the original uh, casing for the Maxwell in this aluminum case is 15 kilos, and it's a 48. So And supercapacitors or even capacitors they're rated at the maximum voltage so unlike a battery 12 volt battery you know um 12 volt battery they'll be at 14 point something volts fully charged <coughs> for lithium ion phosphate that is so a 24 volt uh, lithium battery will be charged to around 29.2 volts so moving forward why do we have 16 16s we actually take these uh, apart and we salvage we disassemble and we take three. We're able to get three banks like this. So there'd be one, two, and there'd be another bank. So one, two, three, 16 plus 16 plus 16 equals uh, 48 volts. So with that being 16 volt, this is perfect for 12 volt application because maximum voltage is 16. So with, with 12 volt applications, we have a solar panel batteries at 12 volts. We have car audio. Uh, with the boombox amplifier, etc., uh, in, in the car audio. Uh, and then we also have marine starting and also engine starting. So when we talk about engine starting, let's just call it engine starting, whether it's marine, whether it's a uh, car, whether it's four-wheel drive, whether it's machinery, whether it's uh, diesel generators, uh, four-wheel drives and whatnot, it's a engine starting application. So we want to make this video dedicated for our, um, all our boaters, guys who's got fishing boats, uh, and the challenges that you have with a fishing boat is you are not driving or you're not using your boat every single day. Hence, the battery most of the time gets neglected and with a lead battery, um, very quickly you find that you're spending, you're chewing through batteries every year. 
<clears throat> with a car, um, you drive it daily, your battery is fully charged. So, but having said that, that is this negligence on the user part to let the lead acid battery run down. But let's talk about the cranking um, application for these. By themselves, they can crank any engines. You can throw at it a V12 6 liter. Um, we've got a video of that doing that, uh, a Mercedes SL600. Uh, and you can chuck these on a, I don't know, truck. Caterpillar, diesel, big, giant diesel um, engines, these will turn it over. Um, a diesel engine is much more higher compression than a petrol engine, so any big diesel rig, these things won't even sweat. 1,900 amps. So call it 1,900 cold cranking amps. Whether it's cold, whether it's mild, whether it's hot, it is 1,900 amps that these, ones, these guys can throw in the various voltages. Moving it's the forward, same. we've covered um, that these can dump a large uh, amount of energy in a split of a second and they can charge it very quickly. But so the question is, why don't we replace these with batteries and call it done, done and dusted? Um, because when you <clears throat> have a supercapacitor, the watt hours, I think it's about three watt hours, three, 3.8 or something watt hours as per the data sheet, and the 1,900 amps is the data sheet, which uh, you can get a hold of. Um, and you can actually see what the specs are on these. Um, so at 3 watt hours, if you talk about amp hours, it's nothing. Mm, could be less than 1 amp hour. So in other words, is if you um, install one of these in your car, for example, I've got a 3 liter <coughs> V6, a um, Toyota Estima, which is like the Toyota Turago, uh it's an import, and it's, it's, it's a V6 Camry engine. That will turn it over like that. Not a problem. But if I were to just only have the supercapacitor, and let's say I leave my headlights on and walk away, within five minutes, this supercapacitor is dead. The voltage has gone down to, to about, let's say, maybe four volts or whatever until the, the, the lights um, stop straining it. Um, so, in other words, at four volts, it ain't going to start a car. So as far as practicality, it is not really practical. <clears throat> um, even though if I charge this supercapacitor, charge it up to let's say 13.8, 14 volts, 14.2, 14.5, or up to 16 volts. And if I leave it, um, the next morning, you'll be still at about 13.8. And then a week or two weeks, and after maybe three or four weeks, you'll be at maybe 13 or 12.8 volts. So it would slowly, slowly, the, the voltage will slowly, gradually go down. But on its own, they hold the voltage not too bad. But nowadays, modern cars, it's not, not like your old Datsun 180B. <laughs> you turn the key off, pull it out, that's it. Nothing's running. There's no alarm system. There's no computer. There's no ECUs. Um, nothing. So whereas with the modern cars that we all have these days, um, you pull your key out. It's, uh, they call it the uh, parasitic drain on the system. Just minute, small currents, and that's going to every minute. Um, so with that, it's not a practical sense to have just a supercapacitor to replace your batteries. Um, even though some people are doing it, where they've got a, the car is parked outside, not, not under cover. Uh, they've got a little, uh, maybe five or 10 watt solar panel, which is the size of maybe this big. And they throw it in front of the dashboard, under the sun, and they just keep it connected to the batteries directly. And guess what? Every single day, whether it's cloudy, whether it's not cloudy, um, bang the solar panel keeps these charged at all times. Um, so that's one instance that people can get away with doing this, knowing that they've, they've already got a system in place to keep these charged all the time. But the idea of that the most optimal is to have a battery pack in conjunction with a supercapacitor. So whether you have a lead acid battery, which is your cranking battery at the moment, starting battery, um, you can have that in, and add a supercapacitor in parallel. So this is our hybrid. This is a prototype. But let's treat this, for this example, let's treat it as a lead acid battery, a cranking battery. So what I've done in my camper van, to give you an example of how well this works, is <clears throat> my camper van uh, with all this lockdown at the moment is we're not driving it. So we haven't driven it for like you know two or three weeks. And as you know, with the lead battery, uh, the system drain on the car and this and that, my, when I uh, checked it the other day, it was at 10.3, 10.4 volts. I'll show you a little clip I've inserted on here. 
um, and then you can sort of get a glimpse of what a supercapacitor can do. So what I did on my camp van, I've already got one of these capacitors hooked in parallel. So connection from there to there using very thin wires, such as this. See how thin that is? This is just a lithium version that we've made available. Okay, this is a lithium iron phosphate, 25 amp hour. So we're using very thin gauge. I've connected this to that, and I connected this to that. And at 10 volts, 10.4 volts, the supercapacitor, because this will always float at the same voltage as your battery. Wherever the battery is at, this will be always at it. Um, at 10.4 volts, boom, she cranked over. Nice and strong. First time. And straight away, the alternator will bring it back up within a couple of seconds, 14.4. A supercapacitor takes away cranking amps from any batteries. <clears throat> so this is a solution that we've got. So it's already set up here. So this is a standard um, 16 uh, volt uh, supercapacitor. And this is a 12 volt, 25 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. So it's a small little baby. So this is your motorbike battery size. So let's say um, I've got a V12 12 litre diesel engine right here, big machinery, okay? And I've got this battery, and if, if I were to connect this 25 amp hour 12 volt <coughs> lithium ion phosphate battery with these thin leads straight to the starting system of this V12 12 litre diesel engine, when I go to crank it, Guess what? This wire is going to just melt and just bleh, be a mess. And there won't be enough current <laughs> to even turn that thing over. But what we've got here is, we've got a battery parallel to a supercapacitor. And the supercapacitor will be the main point of contact to the starting engine. <clears throat> so when you crank over, even though these two are sitting at, let's say they're both sitting at 13.8 volts. When you crank over on that V12 12 litre diesel, <clears throat> it's going to take hundreds and hundreds of amps. Let's just call it <clears throat> 800 amps, maybe 1,000 amps, or even say 1,900 amps, the maximum that, that this can give. But round up, we've got 1,000 amps is pulled, being pulled for, for a couple of seconds, one or two or three seconds. This will give it all, and the voltage of this will go down. And by the time that the... Um, alternator has started within three or four seconds this has already gone back up because there's only not even there's only three watt hours in this capacitor only three watt hours so it only takes maybe three seconds four seconds let's go to fully charge up again if you were to get a uh, a, a um, multimeter and put it on here and check it you see the voltage sag and straight away bounce back up right before your eyes within three or four seconds done so that's why a supercapacitor um, is great for engine starting applications you can see that from this example of using it's not even just, just an example it's what we do on all our vehicles <laughs> and what uh, customers are already doing with our whether they buy the supercapacitor by itself and uh, parallel to their parallel to their existing batteries or they get a lithium ion phosphate batteries from us and then do the same thing so as you can see these wires won't be able to crank an engine um, for most parts. They get very, very hot and you might get a, you know, melted leads and stuff. But being a low internal resistance, the internal resistance of a supercapacitor is way lower than a battery. Okay, way, way, way lower. So that's where when the supercapacitor, when it's asked upon, when, when these, these are paralleled, so when it, you have a large um, request for, for current to be dumped, the capacitor is there. Because the path, electricity uh, travels down the path of least resistance. And the path of le least resistance is the supercapacitor, not here. This will already, boom, given it, where this will start to give it, you see. So, and by the time uh, this the engine is started, this will... Be charged again so the question is let's say you've got a because um, we're talking about uh, guys with um, boats we're talk we're making this video dedicated to boaters so let's say you flooded you've got a flooded engine and we said that a supercapacitor you leave your lights on um, it will uh, drain within you know five five or in you know, a six or ten minutes you drain uh, the supercapacitor 
but this just to give you a indication, a reference point, uh, a 2.4 liter four cylinder um, car, no batteries, just a super capacitor, fully charged. Uh, you can crank it for 30 seconds, meaning. When the starter motor starts clicking. So that's a whole 30 seconds on a 2.4 litre engine, a petrol engine, mind you, four cylinder. Okay, so with, with that uh, as a reference point, so when you've got an outboard engine, which are smaller than a 2.4 litre um, uh, four cylinder, or even though some are getting quite large these days, um, but that gives you a reference point how many. You can call it uh, cranking cycles or duty cycles that the engine can tung, 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 and turn. But if you've got a situation where you've paralleled it with your existing lead battery or a lithium ion phosphate battery such as this, 25 amp hour, <clears throat> let's say you cranked it after 30 seconds. Not that you're gonna ever going to crank your engine for 30 seconds straight in the row. Number one, it's not good for the starter, starter motor. And number two is if it doesn't crank within three seconds, first try, second try, you would stop and you think, there's something wrong let's check it out what's happening is a flood this and that so let's say you did th you did the 30 seconds your capacitor is do, 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 do. you stop and this would top up your capacitor as soon as you as soon as there's not a load on the capacitor the voltages will even out straight away it would just work and even out because everything anything in parallel is going to always be the same voltage so you've got your battery voltage here, you've got your capacitor here, you start it cranking, chung, 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 you stop, and within a couple of seconds, the uh, the voltages on your caps is ready, is ready charged back up again from the battery. It tops it up. So you can always try again, and again, and again. 20 amp hours, you, you're, you're not lacking power <laughs> to, um, to, to crank. So that's why it's fantastic to put a supercapacitor in parallel to an existing battery. Even better, lithium iron phosphate. So at this, the point of this video is we're trying to get away as boaters. We're trying to get away from the lead, um, lead batteries. <coughs> lead batteries are heavy, they are high maintenance, <coughs> and they can be unreliable at times when not looked after. Whereas with the lithium iron phosphate batteries, if you were to charge it full, uh, let's say it's just sitting at 13.8, um, and then you have your boat in storage for one year. After one year, 365 days, it would be at, you know, 12.4, 12.3 volts. And let's say on the second year, it could be at, you know, 13 volts, 12.9 volts, 12.8 volts. So as you can see that the voltages, once they are charged, they will hold very, very well. Uh, and even with a supercapacitor, I mean, I've got, um, in the early days, we've tested <coughs> lithium ion phosphate batteries connected to a, um, a supercapacitor, and, uh, and I've let it set for six months, and the, uh, the voltage just, just doesn't move. It's stable, rock solid. So when you're talking about a lead acid battery, <laughs> you leave it uncharged, sitting there um, for three weeks, four weeks, after, even after two weeks, the voltage is are going down then it's all downhill after that um, the life cycle of a lithium ion phosphates if you were to discharge it to hundred percent our application is for cranking so you never do that but just to give you an idea of life cycle depth of discharge hundred percent two thousand five hundred times if you did it every single day that is three uh, that is six point eight eight years that the battery will last you meaning empty full one day empty full charge a cup full second day do it for 6.88 years. Uh, a lead acid battery, um, a deep cycle one for, 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 for uh, deep cycle uses, they will only recommend you 50% depth of discharge. So you've got 100 amp hour, only use 50 at the most, um, and you get 350 to 400 cycles out of it. So uh, if you do a cost um, versus benefits and the, the, the performance of the two technologies, whether you buy a uh, lead battery for, for cranking, uh, buy a very good lead battery for cranking uh, versus getting a system uh, such as, as this that we have uh, made available with supercapacitors and lithium batteries. You find that in the midterm and the long term straight away. I mean, of course, the, up, the upfront cost is not even uh, that much more expensive, um, you know, or can even call a short term investment. It is, uh, makes more sense to go with supercapacitors and lithium ion.
the available packages or available options to buy is you can buy a 48 volt which is probably not useful for the boating community um for, so we'll put this aside these are 300 dollars 300 dollars each originally brand spanking new you can buy these for 3000 3200 bucks each the 48 volt okay <laughs> and then the, the the 16 volt even though they, they do come 16 volt like this but in the same aluminium case as you saw over there uh, and they sell it for like a thousand one hundred so over a thousand dollars brand new so we sell these for uh, the 48 volt we sell it for three hundred dollars and these ones the 16 we sell it for um for 150 dollars so the 16 as you can see there is a balancing circuit and even on the uh, 48 volt up here bring it back in here without ruining the wall scratching the wall see this top plastic case warranty void if seal is broken <laughs> um, so there is a balancing circuit an equalization circuit in there which monitors all the 18 cells and when they exceed individual cell I forgot to say they are 2.7 volts maximum so 2.7 is 16 to be exact 16.2 is going to 16 round down so uh, and this will monitor so when we actually disassemble uh, the the caps to get these which is a tedious job you gotta be very careful <clears throat> and the bus bars connecting are all laser welded uh, and they're aluminium and they're very easily uh, easily broken as well if you're not careful so what we do with these is we take it out from the original we salvage three of these and then we purchase brand new equalizing board because the the equalizing board which monitors every single cell and keeps them all in balance uh, whenever they reach past 2.7 there's a resistance on there that will turn on and drain down that cell so it keeps it all in balance um, we buy new boards and we install it you can see it from here see that little connector and there's a board there and that's the uh, the intelligence um, of keeping yourselves balanced and that's why we're selling these for hundred and fifty dollars uh, and 150 bucks plug and play positive negative <coughs> two terminals <coughs> for you to um, to connect to whatever application you wish to so you can buy this 150 bucks by themselves and we and these are walking out the door as we speak literally we're selling them by you know sometimes hourly people you know uh for car audio I mean, for example in the car audio field um when the bass drops with a high powered amplifier from with the car engine running from about 14.4 uh, volts when the bass boom they call it burping um, it would drop down hits hard 12.2 12.3 12.4 and the voltage drops from 14.2 down to 12 point something that's a lot of uh, voltage a lot of uh, wattage loss install a super cap it drops 0 0.3 0 0.4 volts minimum drop so move that aside that's a single super capacitor 150 bucks what other other options do we have if you want to get rid of your lead acid battery um, go ahead and purchase 170 dollars this is a 12 volt 25 amp hour in a nice abs case like this and you can and that comes so at, as a package for 320 dollars um 150 for the super capacitor uh 170 for the lithium ion phosphate 25 amp hour i uh, will give you all the all the leads to suit the capacitor and it's up to you to mount it this way that way flat long um, this can be mounted in all shapes uh, in all directions um, just make sure you've got the polarity correct and this is a solution this is a hundred euro uh, cranking solution for you uh, this little battery as we said before does not see any cranking amps this does it and with a million cycles on a super capacitor uh, super capacitors can be at zero volts for a thousand years at the end at the end of the thousand years you take it you charge it up it will work just like brand new so that is a 320 dollar solution so moving that aside for cranking your um, your boats we have a prototype uh, what we've just developed I've just got this put together uh, in Melbourne this is a prototype 10th of August 2020 cranking hybrid it's a cranking hybrid battery it is 12 volt 25 amp hour oh before I forget um, these Super capacitors, you notice that the shape of them is nice and long, correct? It's long. Uh, we offer a $70 service fee. 
which will make this instead of $150, you pay $220, we charge $70. And what we'll do with that is, we will physically uh, cut that bus bar, aluminium bus bar, <clears throat> in half, and we'll have this folded 180, so that you get a block. You can, instead of getting one row times six, you've got two rows times three. So one, two, three on one row, second row, one, two, three. So basically bend it in half like this. So you get a blocky configuration. And what we need, what we need to do is <coughs> we need to TIG weld uh, aluminum bus bars to connect these two. Because once you cut it, there's no room whatsoever to do anything. It's right there. Each cap is there. So we chop it, turn it around. And as you know, TIG welding, uh, it's... It's very, very hot, but we are quick with it. Uh, and basically, we just put a bus bar on, TIG weld it on both connections on the sides, so it's all nice and strong. Um, and then we'll wrap it up into a PVC, and you get similar to this. I might even just insert a photo for reference. Um, as a finished product, plug and play with two terminals. So that's an extra $150 plus $70. We'll get it chopped in half and convert it for you if you want a blocky um, shape versus a thin and long. So up to you if you can fit thin and long, mate, $150, do it. Um, if you prefer a blocky, then $70, bucks, we can get it done. So moving forward, so what we've done here is the concept of this concept, correct? Of having a 25 amp hour, amp hour lithium ion phosphates and a super capacitor we have this case is a national spec common size internationally spec is a ns70 it's a ns70 battery case um, and abs case handles that's 6.7 kilos 6.7 kilos it is. It has the 16 volt, 500 uh, farad supercapacitor. One of these, of course, it's been chopped in half, switched over to a block, TIG welded, and then we've made the connections internally. Um, and it has the battery built in into one box. This is a standard size box, battery box. So if you look at the size of an NS70. That's the size. I haven't got the size on the top of my head, but I think it's like uh, maybe 230. Don't quote me. A 170 and 205 high, I think. Um, yeah, so that is the, oh, I've got a ruler here, That's a, there you go, what do I have here, oh, 250, just over 250, 255, 170, not quite, 165, just, just under 165, uh, and the height is 200, yep, 200, 205 with the bolts, so it's very, very small, um, easy swap over, so in a lot of cars, this will be, will be a solution to um, just take out your lead battery and put a 6.7 kilo battery and that's your cranking um, problem solved uh, forever. So this is it. Uh, and we're selling these for $380. We are pre-selling these right now. Um, we are manufacturing these. The prototype I did here in Melbourne, very happy with it. Uh, and we've gone to a production with it. So the first run, there'll be limited numbers. So if you guys are interested, definitely get in touch with us uh, and pre-order. Uh, payment up front, which means guarantee that when it comes in, we're looking at, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll update the uh, the ETAs uh, when the container is coming into Melbourne. So, but uh, we'll put the informa information out online and you, and you can get in touch with us for, um, for the place and order. So there we have it. What we talked about um, in the last you know, 10, 20 minutes or so, into a box, the whole idea of it, all cramped in this. So the creation and the thoughts and all the ideas and all the brainstorming into a beautiful, beautiful 6.7 kilo standard size with even a handle, negative, positive. Um, bear in mind, it is M8. It's a uh, 8 mil. Um, any lugs that you need to do, if it's not 8 mil, you've got to convert it, but quite, quite generic 8 mil lugs. So there you go. If there's any other questions, um, get in touch with us. And we're more than happy to, um, to answer them. But thank you for your time. And hopefully this gives you a good insight to what a super capacity is. And what is the, um, the application. And, um, and how we can use it to our benefits um, for our hobby. And if you know anybody who needs a super capacitor in their life. You know, send them this video. 
uh, share, share some of the love out there with everybody. <laughs> uh, a bit of super capacitor love. Um, and even with the mining industry, we are now supplying to even places like Lightning Ridge. It's an opal mine, and they've got 50 degrees summer um, temperatures. And being with machineries, diesel, diesel engines are abundant there. And with diesel engines, with lead batteries, with a high heat, um, guess what? They're chewing through a lot of um, uh, lead batteries. Uh, and we, when we're talking about a good AGM for cranking, uh, Optima, Optima, the red tops, uh, 800 cold cranking amps, and, and those are AGM, special spiral AGM, they call it. Uh, that's 350 bucks, and they're on special 320, 330, but 350 bucks for a AGM, which weighs like an elephant, um, versus $380. Uh, you've got fantastic te technology, made by Maxwell Technologies, uh, American company. Um, and with lithium iron phosphates, uh, latest uh, um, lithium batteries, and at, at 6.7 kilos, 380 bucks. Crunch some numbers, as you can see, doesn't take much to come to the conclusion that this is the way of the future. Brought to you by FPV Power. Ian here, signing out.